George's Marvellous Medicine, Chapter 6, Brown Paint. George turned off the heat under the saucepan. He must leave plenty of time for it to cool down. When all the steam and froth had gone away, he peered into the giant pan to see what colour it was. It was a deep, brilliant blue. It needs more brown in it, George said. It simply must be brown or she'll get suspicious. George ran outside and dashed into his father's tool shed where all the paints were kept. There was a row of cans on the shelf, all colours, black, green, red, pink, white and brown. He reached for the can of brown. The label said, simply, dark brown gloss paint, one quart. He took a screwdriver and prized off the lid. The can was three quarters full. He rushed it back to the kitchen. He poured the whole lot into the saucepan. The saucepan was now full to the brim. Very gently, George stirred the paint into the mixture with the long wooden spoon. Aha! It was all turning brown, a lovely, rich, creamy brown. Where's that medicine of mine, boy? came the voice from the living room. You're forgetting me. You're doing it on purpose. I'll tell your mother. I'm not forgetting you, Grandma, George called back. I'm thinking of you all the time, but there are still ten minutes to go. You're a nasty little maggot, the voice screeched back. You're a lazy and disobedient little worm. And you're growing too fast. George fetched the bottle of Grandma's real medicine from the sideboard. He took out the cork and tipped it all down the sink. He then filled the bottle with his own magic mixture by dipping a small jug into the saucepan and using it as a pourer. He replaced the cork. Had it cooled down enough yet? Not quite. He held the bottle under the cold tap for a couple of minutes. The label came off in the wet, but that didn't matter. He dried the bottle with a dishcloth. All was now ready. This was it. The great moment had arrived. Uh, medicine time, Grandma, he called out. I should hope so too, came the grumpy reply. The silver tablespoon in which the medicine was always given lay ready on the kitchen table. George picked it up. Holding the spoon in one hand and the bottle in the other, he advanced into the living room. I hope you're enjoying George's Marvellous Medicine so far. If you would like me, we're about halfway through this book, if you would like me to read you another book when we finish this one, put it in the comments below or comment on the blog and I will find that book and I will read the books that you would like me to read for you when I finish this one. Okay, see you later.